let me uh, begin by saying ClearSide is a NASDAQ listed uh, company and uh, we recently went public back in June. Um, but we're an ophthalmic pharmaceutical company focused on retina and choroidal disease. Uh, I have a disclaimer for forward-looking statements that all of you can read. I may be making some uh, forward-looking statements or some data interpretations, so just refer to this one in the event you're interested in, in investing. ClearSide Biomedical is a pharmaceutical company focused in targeted therapy, therapy for retina and choroidal disease. There's a number of compelling reasons why this company is in existence, but we have exclusive and proprietary access via a micro-injection platform to 17 square centimeters in the human eye through the suprachoroidal space. This allows us free access to the choroid, which is many of these tissues we've been trying to get to. We have two phase two clinical trials that have been read out, two of which will be uh, provided um, on Saturday at the subspecialty day. We're in phase three right now in a uveitis program, and we have a team that's uh, available to uh, work. The way this works is very similar to an intravitreal injection in the way you prep the patient in the way that you would uh, sterilize the patient. It's, it, time takes the same time, but we just tuck drug underneath the sclera of the eye. There were two novel observations when this was first discovered at Emory and Georgia Tech. One of the observations was that drug immediately spreads to the posterior side of the eye in a thin film through the suprachoroidal space on top of the choroid. And this provides nice bioavailability to those target tissues. The second of these um, novel observations, as you can see in this very oversimplified photo, is that we see a change in pharmacokinetics of drug within the eye without changing formulation just by going into the suprachoroidal space versus an intravitreal injection. So in 2015, there were about $7.8 billion of anti-VEGF treatments given worldwide. They, intravitreal injection works great, but for many compounds like steroids, it doesn't work so great because now we can avoid many parts of the anterior segment of the eye where intraocular pressure increases occur, where cataracts occur, and provide a high bioavailability to the retina, which provides some benefits. Our, go our goal is rapid vision gain, holding on to those vision gains longer to have fewer injections and improve this risk to benefit um, pr profile, as well as a very consistent response across all of the patients that have been treated and becomes very valuable. So we, we have a portfolio of uh, programs. The initial program is with Triamcinolone, which is our Zuprata for suprachoroidal injection. It's been uh, in phase three now for uveitis. This program is um, uh, currently enrolling and has phase two data that will be presented tomorrow. We also will be presenting for the first time our retinal vein occlusion data. This is with combined with an anti-VEGF ILEA. This combination provided superiority over ILEA. You'll see in a second, or maybe I'll have time to go through. And then we have a wet AMD program, which is excitinib, which is a tyrosine kinase inhibitor focused on PDGF anti-VEGF inhibition that we believe will be a very long-acting progr uh, program in the suprachoroidal space. So let's touch on the first of two phase two clinical trials. The Dogwood study is a study that we did in uh, uveitis looking at macular edema associated with uveitis. We're the first company to go after macular edema in a best corrective visual acuity trial. This, we believe this will uh, read out um, sometime late next year. But to summarize, we saw in this study 9.2 letters of improvement of vision. All of the inflammatory scores improved. We saw retinal thickness of 69 to 70% of these patients had an improvement of at least 20, uh, 20 points of 20% of improvement of reduction in retinal thickness. We saw 56% of these patients have a um, flat retina at the end of this uh, two month period of time. And the, uh, to summarize the efficacy of this product, we saw good efficacy, most best corrective visual acuity in both clinical trials, both a phase two and a phase one, two. We saw statistically significant reduction in thick, retinal thickness in patients treated in the phase two and duration of improvement in visual acuity up to six months with a single injection. We saw no serious adverse events, no serious uh, that would lead to uh, discontinuation, and we didn't see any steroid-related intraocular pressure in both of these trials. So we believe that the, the profile that we showed you did have some benefit to these patients. The, the retinal vein occlusion study that will be, by the way, the, that, that study will be presented by Diana Doe uh, tomorrow morning, at, or sorry, Saturday morning at the retina subspecialty day. 
The, um, the second study is our tanzanite study. This is a study for retinal vascular disease, particularly in retinal vein occlusion. We looked at uh, a single, uh, 23 patients in each arm where we gave a combination of either Zuprata which is, and Ilea or Ilea alone, and we looked at the number of injections that were required. We saw over, 60, over a three-month period, we saw 60% fewer injections over this three-month period uh, in this trial. Of the 23 patients, we saw 16 patients in the Ilea alone arm have to be retreated with Ilea during that three-month period. Only five had to be retreated, and to kind of break that down, two of the patients had Continue, had to be retreated every month because of their disease, but three of the patients only had to be retreated at the end of month three, and 18 patients in the 23 did not need to be retreated. But most importantly, the, uh, in, in, if you look at the visual acuity over those first three months, we saw a two-line improvement in superiority over ILEA alone, and that's what we believe David Brown will talk about on Saturday around 2 o'clock. From the uh, on summary, we saw greater improvement of vision and, and uh, macular edema and no serious adverse events, and the side effect profile was benign. Thank you very much for your attention. Clearside Biomedical.